The Anderson Family. You can't blame me for wanting my dues, Mr. Anderson. In good faith, I loaned you our lawnmower. And I'll return it in good faith. I'm sure there must be some misunderstanding. If there's one thing I admire in a man, it's integrity. I admire honesty. Quiet, Free Baron. I'll, I'll scratch his eyes out. Free Baron, that's I'll, enough. I'll tear his collar off. Look, I'll return your lawnmower. I don't want to hear any more about it. Uh-oh. Here we go again, folks. <laughs> visit the Anderson family. This whole thing started when Oliver Anderson borrowed a lawnmower about six weeks ago from Mr. and Mrs. Freebaron Briggs, neighbors across the street. However, all thoughts of having borrowed it have disappeared from Oliver Anderson's mind, for the important thing at this moment is borrowing $2,500 from a new bank in town. Oliver wants to improve his property and must make application by letter to the board of directors of the loan institution. He has just finished writing the letter. Ah. Mm -hmm. All finished. If this letter doesn't get some action from that board of directors, I'll quit. Let's read it. You mean let's tear it to pieces. Now, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a straightforward, honest letter. That's what counts in getting money from a bank, honesty. Oh, yeah? Well, I'll still get it. Oliver, Junior didn't mean anything by that. Oh. Of course, it's a lot in who you know, too, Pop. That's right. Well, I know Connors and Bingham. But there are a couple of new directors. I don't know who they are. Oh, I'm sure this letter will do the trick. You took long enough to write it. Oh, just an hour is all. Hey, you write a pretty good hand, Pop. Yes, I do, don't I? And your paragraphs are neat. Gee, thanks. Just that I retained my schooling. I guess you can't be too careful on a letter like this. That's right. I'm glad you take such interest in things like this, Junior. Yeah, but I don't think it's a good idea to head it with, for heaven's sakes, men, don't turn this down. I need it. Let me have that letter. It's no concern of yours what I put in it. And there are two P's in application, Pop. I know it. I know. Uh, how many do I have? One. Well, no wonder. With everyone talking and playing the radio, it's a wonder I have the address right. No, no, let's relax. Let's have a nice, quiet evening. I'll type it neatly for you, Oliver, after a while. Yeah, well, I think typewritten letters get more action anyhow. You have a good idea there, but you'd better stick pretty closely to what I have there. What did Mr. Connor say when you mentioned the loan to him? Well, he said it was okay with him, and so did Bingham. It's up to the other two directors. Well, maybe you'd better find out who they are. That's not important. Connors and Bingham's can swing them. Hey, did you tell Pop about your being chairman on the flower planting drive, Mom? Oh, that's not important, Junior. Of course it is. Who elected you? Oh, well, Mrs. Briggs across the street suggested me. She carries quite a bit of weight with the girls. Yes, I noticed. She could lose about 100 pounds of the weight she carries. And... Oliver. Oh, excuse me. I just don't like that woman. Now, she's always been swell to me. I still don't like her. Or that weak-kneed husband of hers. He can't cut their grass without her permission. But they're very happy, Oliver. Yes, certainly. I've seen dogs and cats eating together, but it's only because they had to. And they just got their new car, too. Oh, did they? What color? Black. They just drove home a few minutes ago. Mrs. Briggs was in the back seat. I'll bet it's equipped with radar from the back seat. Ah, uh -huh, now that's no way to talk, Oliver. Well, she burns me. Old Homer Meister, $10 for three months for that cement job and didn't even return his mixer. I don't like people like that. But Mr. Briggs seems like a nice fella, Pop. Of course he is, but she won't let him be himself. I wonder if she did, what kind of a fella he, she'd he be? Well, they're happy. That's what counts, as I said before. Oh, you mean she's happy. I don't think Free Baron Briggs has been out after dark for years. Well, you and Junior continue this uninteresting conversation. I'm going to the store. Get some of those chocolate cookies for my lunch, Mom. If they have them, I will. Just look under his counter. Uh-oh. 
Here comes the Briggs family, Pop. I have nothing I want to discuss with them. Now, well, wait a minute. I can't understand why everyone leaves. Okay, I hear you. Oh, hello, Mrs. Briggs. Who's behind you? Oh, it's Freeban. Well, come on in. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Thank you. Gee, you got a haircut, didn't you, Freeban? We didn't come here to discuss personal appearances. Oh. Well, then come on in here where we can be comfortable. Take off your hat, Free Baron, and get that wad of chewing gum out of your mouth. Yes, dear. Well, it's mighty nice of you folks to drop in. Mm-hmm. You've lost some weight, haven't you, Millicent? That is of no consequence, Mr. Anderson. Please don't fawn all over us. Our trip is very unpleasant. Unpleasant? Yes. Free Baron wanted to come over alone, but I know his vicious temper. So I decided to take the cat by the horns. Cat? Bull. No, this is the truth, Anderson. Quiet, Free Baron. Now, Mr. Anderson, when you asked to use our lawnmower a couple of months ago, I said yes. Mm, well, yes, you did, and I... Now, uh... I didn't ask you for references, nor a deposit. You mean Junior has borrowed it lately? You borrowed it, Mr. Anderson. Me? You borrowed the lawnmower, Anderson. I believe I did. And I didn't say a word when you pried the lock off the shed to get it. Oh, yeah, yeah well, I remember. You weren't home, and you, I... Uh... You, you broke the lock off. I did? Well, gee, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'll buy you another lock. I suppose I should have done something about this before. Now, if there's one thing I cannot stand in a man, it's procrastination. Uh, I can see that. But I thought I had taken your lawnmower back or had Junior do it. If you'd have had Junior do it, it would have been done. If there's one boy in the neighborhood who is dependable, that boy is Junior. He must take after his mother's side of the family. Uh, well, yes, Mary's a lot that way, of course. And I'll agree that sometimes things do slip my mind and possibly the lawnmower was left out in our garage. It had better be out there, Mr. Anderson. Uh, how's that? It had better be, uh, she said. Don't walk on that side, Mrs. Briggs. It's all planted. My, my. This place used to be so beautiful before you people bought it. Hmm. And look at it now. Free Baron, now, now, control yourself. Now, let's see, lawnmower, lawnmower. Over there beside the bush, is it, that it? You mean it's been outdoors rusting all this time? I wonder if this is yours. It has two wheels at the handle, must be. They all have two wheels. For heaven's sake, Free Baron, it is our lawnmower. Just look at that. Go ahead, Anderson, look at it. Well, there isn't much wrong with it. But it's all rusted, that wheel is half off, and look at the handle. Go ahead, Anderson, look at that handle. Gee, well... Yeah, I guess you're right. But I don't understand why Junior didn't put it in out of the weather. And this wheel, it's broken. Go ahead, look at it, the wheel. Yes, I see, but that can be fixed. Either fixed as it was, or a new one. How's that? Bake it and do it, darling. Oh, no, you don't, not a new one. I'll fix this one and it'll be returned in good shape, Mrs. Briggs. Possibly. To think, neighbors. Ah, oh, me, one never really knows their neighbors. If it hadn't been for this lawnmower... I might have gone on thinking you people were all right. Now, wait a minute, Lady Mountain Dean. I pay for my mistakes and my son's mistakes. I'll send it to the fix-it shop and it'll re be returned like new. You know, Mr. Anderson, <clears throat> as hard as I try, I don't think I'm ever going to like you. The feeling is somewhat more than mutual, Mrs. Briggs. Ordinarily, I'm a very courteous fellow, but I don't like to be abused. Now, Anderson, those are fighting words. I meant them to be fighting now, words. Now, now. Free Baron, don't strike Mr. Anderson. Hmm. No need of your facing a manslaughter charge. I'll scratch his eyes Free out. Free no, no. I'll tear off oh, his please, collar. Oh, Free Baron, no. I'll pull his hair this out. This is getting ridiculous. And if I thought you could get a price on getting his face fixed along with the lawnmower, I'd shut him up for you. You threaten Free, Free Baron. Oh, come now, Mrs. Briggs. This is silly. No, it's not. I don't enjoy this. I only want what's right. She only wants what's right. But I'm willing to return the lawnmower, Mrs. Briggs. But you certainly took your time about it. If oh. there's one thing I admire in a man, it's integrity. I admire your honesty. Quiet, Free Baron. Well, I'll leave you with your conscience, Mr. Anderson. And I expect the lawnmower returned in the same condition as when you broke into the shed and stole it. Stop. Stole it! You stole it. Uh, she said. Oh, come now, Mrs. Briggs. I don't want to hear another word. Come, Free Baron. Well, Mary will be terribly sorry about this, Mrs. Briggs. I'm upset too. But Mary's stuck with you. I'm not. <laughs> I don't see why you keep blaming Junior for the lawnmower being broken and rusted, Oliver. Well, I may have borrowed it, but he's seen that lawnmower 50 times in the backyard. Why didn't he put it away? He isn't too young to be careful of things. But, Oliver, he didn't borrow that it. That isn't the point. 
Junior? Yeah, Mom? Come here a minute. Butch Chapman's waiting for me. Can it wait? It cannot. Tell Butch you aren't coming back out this evening, and then come here a minute. I don't get it, but okay. That's hardly fair, Oliver. It's the only way, Mary. Hey, I can't come out now, Butch. See you tomorrow. Could have waited until later, Oliver. What's wrong? Why can't I go out? Your father wants to talk to you. Yeah. Junior? You remember we borrowed the Briggs lawnmower a few weeks ago. We? Oui, you did, Pop. Who borrowed it is not important. The lawnmower was left out of the backyard to rust and break. Rust and break? Not the Briggs lawnmower. Oh, yes, it was. Now, just to show you that life isn't a bowl of prunes. Cherries, Oliver. All right, cherries. You're going to pay the cost of putting that lawnmower in shape. Oh, gee, Pop, let me explain what you're There's doing. There's nothing to explain. You know what it's all about. But maybe he wants to say something, Oliver. Yes, I know. But that still stands. You pay the bill. And maybe it'll break you of being careless. But if you'd let me explain... There's about... nothing to explain, Junior. I've taken the lawnmower to the fix-it shop, and the bill is $11.12. You shouldn't have taken it to the shop, Pop. Now, you're going to tell me how to run my life. No, he isn't, Oliver. He's just trying just to... Just trying to out-talk me. Yes, I know. So go ahead now. Go do your homework, and then go to bed. Okay, but if you'd just let me say one thing... Never mind now, darling. I'll be up and tuck you in. Okay. Guess I'm outvoted again. He was trying to tell you something, Oliver. Of course he was. He wanted to tell me where I was wrong. He doesn't realize yet that older people learn through experience, and that's what he's doing. I'll get it, Oliver. Maybe Mrs. Meister. Hmm. Yes? Yes, he is, Mr. Bingham. Just a moment. Oh, Mr. Bingham, the bank director? Huh, good. Let's have it. Yeah. Doesn't sound cheerful to me. Hello, Bingham. How's everything? Making what tough for myself? Briggs? Oh, that phony. Why... Uh, just... I just... Yes? The new director? Oh. Frank, the new director? But... Uh, but there isn't any place else I can apply for the loan. Yeah, yes, I know you're for it, but... Oh, no go, huh? Okay, Bingham. Thanks, anyhow. So long. No go, huh? No go. Briggs is gonna stop it, the shrimp. But I'll get around that baby yet. When I take his lawnmower back, I'll have it out with him. And his baby hippopotamus, too. And now back to the Anderson family. Oliver has just been turned down at the bank on a loan he hoped to make. The deal soured when he had a little trouble with a neighbor, Mr. Briggs, over the return of a lawnmower Oliver had borrowed and apparently forgot to return, only to find that Mr. Briggs is the new director of the bank. Hoping to smooth over the situation, Oliver and Mary Anderson are just entering the fix-it shop to pick up the lawnmower, which Oliver had repaired. Oh, that looks like the lawnmower, Oliver. Well, how can you tell? They all look alike to me. Here comes the man now. Uh, howdy, folks. Uh, can I do something for you? Oh, 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 Mr. Harkness. Is my lawnmower ready? It's for Oliver Anderson. Mm, uh, Anderson, Anderson. Uh, name don't mean nothing to me. Uh, I go by numbers. Uh, got your stub? Oh, oh, sure. Here. 33B. Mm, uh, 33B. Oh, yes. Uh, sitting right over here. Uh, and am I dead? You know... I've been repairing mowers for better than 30 years, and I never saw one so bent up as that one was. But you were able to fix it. Well, yes, I did. The only thing left of what you brought me is the washers on the wheels. The rest is new lawnmower. Well, uh, maybe you shouldn't have done such a good job. Uh, you said fix her up. Well, yes, I did. Uh, where you live? 13 Beacon Road. Oh, is that so? Uh, say, that, that's right close to Briggs' house, ain't it? Uh, right across the street, yes. Well, now, uh, I hate to ask you this, but uh, as long as you live so close, uh, uh, you're driving, ain't you? Well, yes. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, I wonder if you'd uh, just drop off Briggs's lawnmower at the same time. Why, this one here is Briggs' lawnmower. Uh, must have had two of them, then. Uh, he brung it in about six weeks ago. Had a young boy with him. Boy said his father broke in a blade running over stones and paid for repairs himself. Uh, the kid, the uh, boy did. Six weeks ago? Uh, yep, yep. Uh, he was sure neat. Uh, fool what had run a nice mower over stones. Don't deserve anything from nobody. Well, there must be some mistake here, Mr. Harkness. Well, all I want is $13 for fixing it, and uh, you can work out the rest of the deal with Briggs. Thirteen dollars? 
You said it'd be eleven dollars and twelve cents. Oliver. Well, I'm charging you two dollars for the doctor. The doctor? Yep, yeah, the doctor. Uh, see, a piece of that rust broke off and went in my eye. Oh. And uh, my head's about splitting open. Well, of course, you have my sympathy, but I still think I'm getting gypped. It's uh, thirteen dollars. Yeah, I know, but you've done work for me before. Anderson is the name. I don't care if your name's Duskinini. Names don't mean nothing to me. I'm a number man myself. Oh. Uh, Oliver, let's just take the lawnmowers. Sure, we'll take them. But I don't want this other one now. If it isn't Briggs, it's... Well, just so I get $13, all I care. But $13 is a lot of money. I can get a new one for that. The bill is $13, Oliver. Yeah, I know that, but it's a hold-up. Money isn't growing around on trees. Uh, you brung the lawnmower in, didn't you? Well, yes. Then it's $13. Well, uh, let's pay the man, Oliver. Sure, please. sure, I'll pay him, I'll pay him. It's an obligation. I'll pay it, of course. Well, uh, I don't like the way you talk, fella. Well, let's not go over my bad points now. I'll just pay it and keep still, I guess. And another thing, I'll be very happy to deliver this lawnmower to Briggs. Briggs! Hey, Freeman! Hey, Freeman! I have nothing to discuss with you, Anderson. I have your lawnmower here. Unload it and go on. Okay, I'll throw it in this flower bed. Don't shoot there. Where is it, Free Baron? It's Anderson with the lawnmower. Well, of all things, Free Baron, I want you to go out there and thrash him within an inch of his life. Yes, dear. If you aren't gone in 30 minutes, I shall come out and thrash you, Anderson. Ah, uh, look here, Briggs. She just left. I'll be right down. I don't get this thrashing business, Free Baron. Shh. I just say little things to please the little woman. Yeah, sometimes someone is going to, isn't going to know that. And the little woman is going to be alone. You may be right, Anderson. Uh, is this the Lord Boy? It's both of them. Both? Your own that you took in six weeks ago to the fix-it shop and the one I took in. You owe me $13. I do? How? Because you claimed this other more was yours when it was mine. It caused me anguish, loss of time, and mental worry. Altogether, the civil suit comes to 5000 if I take it to court. I won't pay it. I won't charge you that much, though. I'm not that type of a person, Free Baron. I'm a nice fellow. I'm a rat. Oh, now come, Free Baron, I understand. It's the influence you're under, is all. Yes, you're right. It's baby. Baby? My wife. Hmm. I shall forever free myself of those shackles. Now you're talking like a man. I admire you. I shall have it out with her immediately. Just let her know your boss. Boy, it feels great. You've changed my whole life, Anderson. Well, I did the right things for you. Now I expect you to be a man and okay my loan at the bank. I shall do it immediately. I have a new bad. Gee, that's swell. Connor and Bingham have okayed it. Now you. You, you just have one more hurdle to take. Oh, yeah? Uh, who's the other one? Mr. Harkness at the fix-it shop. Har Harkness? I, uh, I just left there. And you probably made him hate you. However, I shall arrange it. Right now? As soon as I go to the house and start my new life. Well, you'd better be diplomatic. She's an egomaniac. Egomaniac? Mm-hmm. Egomaniac. Mm-hmm. That's a splendid word. I haven't used that. <laughs> I'm a new bad, Anderson. From today, I am a bad. <laughs> But, Oliver, it was none of your affair. Their home life is their own business. Oh, he won't do anything about it. He was weakening as he went up the steps into the house. But he did say he'd sign for your loan. Oh, sure. He was wrong all along, and he knew it. Oliver. Huh? Coming up the walk. What? Mrs. Briggs. Oh, um, uh, you talk to her first, Mary. And... I'll do no such thing. Don't even tell her I'm home. You got into this. Now get out of it. Hmm. Doesn't ring like she's burning. Oh, Mr. Anderson, hmm? I just wanted to tell you the news. Well, come on in. Don't tell it to the whole street. You know, somehow I don't mind your ignorance. I'm so happy I could just cry. Where's Mary? Well, frankly, I don't know. What's wrong that you'd be happy? It's Free Baron. Free Baron? He's made you happy? I'm so happy. I'm sorry I berated you over that lawnmower. Oh, it's a wonderful feeling, Mr. Anderson, to know the true meaning of love. Hmm? 
I don't suppose you understand how I feel. Well, uh, frankly, I don't, I don't get it. But the world has opened new vistas, Mr. Anderson. The clouds of distrust have opened up, and the sunshine of true devotion is just oozing through. Uh, you mean Free Bear? Ah, yes. Bless his little weak heart. Oh, 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 well, uh, what happened? It all happened so suddenly, I don't know myself. It was right after you left our house. Free, Free Baron stomped into the house. Mm. And he only stomps when he's angry. Uh, yeah, uh, well, go on from the stomp. Well, I was seated in the living room. And when Free Baron came in, I knew something was wrong. Yeah, I realize that too. Free Baron walked straight up to me shook his finger under my nose and said, you're an egomaniac. <laughs> egomaniac? I don't know where he ever picked up such a word. Mm. <laughs> Probably from some of his tramp friends. Let's leave his friend out of this. Did he pop you? <laughs> Free Baron doesn't ever uh, uh, pop me. But he did frighten you, huh? Well, yes, at first. But I regained my composure. Mm. Well, I placed my fingers carelessly around his throat. Uh, oh, no, no. Oh, I had no intentions of squeezing so hard at first. And during the uh, scuffle, his right fist hit me behind the ear. Oh, then he didn't muff it. I didn't hear you. Uh, never mind, go ahead. Then what happened? Why, <laughs> I believe you actually enjoy this. Don't be silly. Well, then, his left hand became free somehow, and he, he struck me under the chin. Which one? Both of them. Oh. <laughs> Don't be crude, Mr. Anderson. Oh, uh, good old free man. Game to the end, huh? Ah, yes. It was then my new love was born. I realized at long last, he really loved me enough to swing on me. Well, well, I'm glad it turned out all right. Tell free man I'd like to see him. Oh, he wants to see you, too. And I know he'd like to see Mary. Okay. I'll get Mary and join you in a minute. <laughs> Call surgery. Dr. Smith, call surgery. It's right down this hall. Shh. Quiet, please, in the halls. My husband is a patient here. Yes, I can see why. Uh, name, please. Briggs. Mrs. Freebairn G. Briggs. We're just with her, Doc, really. I... I'll sit over here and wait, Oliver. Okay, Mary, it won't take long, I guess. Right, right. this way, please. 32A. Right, we'll just, just, just sit here in this yeah. chair, right? Please don't stay long. No, no, just a minute. Are you a friend of his? Well, I, uh, I won't know till I talk to him. There you are, freebie darling. Yes, baby? Someone to see you. Hi, Freebear. Gee, I'm sorry it turned out this way. I have a happy bed, Oliver. Oh, I'm so happy too, Freebear. Well, uh, what happened? I don't really remember. I remember seeing the fireplace go by, then the chandeliers went by, the chairs, the couch, a bedlam of digs. Uh, you'll have to leave now. He's getting violent uh, again. Oh, oh, yeah, sure. I'll see you later, free bird, darling. Ah! Come, come, that's long enough. I'm a free bird. I'm a bird again. Ah! I'm a bird. I'm a bird. Will they return free bird to me in good condition, Doc? I'm a bird. Ah! Oh, come I'm now, Mrs. Bird. Briggs. Surely you don't believe in miracles. Ah! What an ordeal, Oliver. <laughs> Poor Free Baron. Poor Free Baron. He'll never know a happier moment than when he swung on her. Well, it did seem to bring them closer together. <laughs> well, sure, that's what they needed. <laughs> when you get stuffed up till you can't take it anymore, it helps. It does sort of make me happy to see them reconcile that way. Well, sure. You see, now everyone's happy. Well, I hope you're right. Hi, Mom. Oh, it's Junior. Now, Mr. Connors called Pop, said the lawn was okay. Okay? Gee, that's swell. Uh, well... What about Harkness, the fix-it man? Oh, he just okayed it when he found out that Briggs was for it. But he remembered my name, and then I was nasty with him. Yeah, I suppose so. I mean, Mr. Connor said Mr. Harkness didn't know you by name. Said he only went by numbers. Oh, isn't that marvelous? We can start to improve the house right away, Oliver. Yeah, but I hate to have Harkness get away with that $13 clip on that phony lawnmower. You got taken in on that, Pop. Who did? You did. That was an old lawnmower I'd picked up for 35 cents from Butch Chapman. Oh, <gasps> So that's where it came from. Well, why did you let me get stuck 
for the money. Why didn't you tell me it wasn't Briggs's? I did try to tell you, but you said get your homework done and go to bed. Oh, he did try to tell you, Oliver. I remember. No, he... you tell me. It seems that someone could have told me along oh, before but this. Oh, he did, Oliver. He tried to. Uh-oh. Here we go again, folks. <laughs> Anderson Family is written by Howard Swart, directed by Herb Litton, and features Dick Lane as Oliver, Louise Arthur as Mary, and Walter Tetley as Junior. Others in the cast were Jenny Johnson, George Peroni, and Doug Young. Music by Gordon Kibbe, sound effects by Ray Erlenborn. Your announcer is Ken Peters. The Anderson Family is a Hollywood Broadcasters production, transcribed from Hollywood. Hollywood.